is Jess Witte, and I'm here to show you my wrapped card set for today's stamp affair. So you can see this is an embossed card. I'm using a special technique of using the reverse side of the die. I'll show you that here in a minute. And then I wrapped my cards and envelopes up in a set of two glassine bags along with some envelope seals and some stamps. So here's the supplies, and the supply list is also at the end. So let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and start with my 3.5 by 5 card, and I'm using some Berry Sorbet ink, and I'm also using one of the smaller butterfly images from the Beautiful Butterfly set. I'm going to be stamping that image, and I'm going to want it centered within my embossed image, so I went ahead and laid the die down on my cardstock just to use it as a guide for where I wanted that stamped image to go. So I'm just holding that stamped image above the die and then I slide the die out, the die out so that um, I have a good visual for where my stamped image should go. I'm also lining it up with the lines on the score mat and the lines on the acrylic block that I'm using. Just helps me get it nice and straight on the first try. And now we're going to go ahead and emboss that butterfly image into the card front. We're just going to use our regular um, sandwich. I'm using my Big Shot, so I'll put the plate down and then the embossing pads. And then my card, and what I'm going to do here is use the back of the die instead of the front lined part of the die. This way the entire back part of the die will emboss into the card and it'll give me a solid embossed image instead of just a lined embossed image. And I'm going to go ahead and use a piece of scrap paper over my card front to prevent the scarring from my plates going onto my card front. I've used that, or I've realized I need to do that through um, some unfortunate trial and error. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and run that through the Big Shot and then bring it back out. And you'll see when I take the sandwich apart that the die, um, the solid part of the die has been embossed. It just gives a different look and it's a nice way to extend what you can do with your dies. Um, I like the solid image that it gives. So I tend to, you know, I do it both ways, but I, I like doing um, the solid image. It's just a nice change. All right, so let's move on to stamping the rest of the card front. I'm going to start with the sentiment and I'm using dark chocolate ink and I'm going ahead and moving that scrap paper because like I said I like to use the grid on the score pal and the grid on the acrylic block to be able to line everything up the first time. So I'm stamping it right within that embossed area just like the extra detail that it gives of stamping it there and bringing a little more attention to that embossing. And I'm going to go ahead and move on to stamping the rest of the butterfly images. I'm going to be using um, my Aquamist ink and a smaller butterfly image there at the top of the card. Um, I'm going to be stamping it off the top of the card. And I have a little bit of something on that stamp. So I wanted to make sure that I'm getting a good image so I go ahead and stamp it off onto the scrap paper. I tend to do that with solid images just to make sure I'm getting a clean impression on the first try. So I'm going ahead and pressing pretty firmly to make sure that impression is good. And then I'm going to move on to one of the larger butterfly images and my Summer Sunrise ink. Definitely my most used ink, I would have to say. <laughs> Definitely my favorite. So I'm going ahead and inking that up, and I'm going to stamp it off of the left side of the card. This is just a really simple card to make, but um, I love the extra detail the embossing gives it. I think it's a great card to do card sets because they're really quick and easy, but they have that extra special detail. Um, so I think that anybody that you gift it to will appreciate them and think that they're cute um, and hopefully won't know that they really only took you probably 10 or 15 minutes to make all five cards. <laughs> all right and we're going to go ahead and move on to the envelopes. 
I have five A1 size envelopes. They're the envelopes that fit the three and a half by five cards that I use most often. And I'm going ahead and inking up another one of those large images from Beautiful Butterflies using Berry Sorbet and just stamping that off of the left side of the envelope. Really simple, but I always think it's fun to get a card in the mail with an envelope that has a little something cute on the outside, a little preview of what's to come. And they're also really simple to do, but they add a lot to the card set. And the next step here is the envelope seals. I went ahead and ran three strips of cardstock through my Xyron. It's just a strip of Summer Sunrise, Aquamist, and Berry Sorbet cardstocks. The Xyron was just a little awkward to get in the video, so I went ahead and just ran them through together, and then I'm going to cut them apart. And the idea here is that I'll die cut the butterflies out of the strips of cardstock and they'll already have the adhesive on the back and the backing paper will also be cut along with the cardstock so they'll be like stickers and I'm just going to include them in my little wrapping of the card set just as a little extra something for um, whoever I'm giving this to to use. So here you can see I went ahead and laid the berry sorbet strip down in my big shot and I'm going to go ahead and die cut it. I'm just trimming it down so that I only run through one section of the cardstock at a time. Like I said earlier, that way it just prevents it from getting scarred up on the rest of the cardstock that I haven't die cut yet. So I just run that through and when I pull it back out it's going to be die cut along with the backing, making it into a quick little sticker that they can use on the back of their envelope to seal it all up. Just another cute little detail. I love things like that. It also gave me a good excuse to add in a second glassine bag to the wrapping on the packaging. And I just really love those glassine bags. so. I thought that was a good way to take up another little space, another little pocket. So I have two glassine bags here, and what I'm going to be doing is trimming the ends off of both of them because I'm going to stitch down the middle and I want them to be open on both sides. So I love that little pinked edge, the original edge, so I went ahead and used um, those old decorative edge scissors. The pinking ones are one of the few that I've kept around. <laughs> still think they're pretty handy. So I'm just cutting the ends off of both of those bags. You have to be a little careful when you use those darn scissors to make sure you get all the cutting nice and neat. <laughs> and I'm just going to stack those bags one on top of another. I went ahead and laid them together and I'm going to add just a little bit of adhesive to the smaller bag um, just so that when I run it through my sewing machine it doesn't wiggle around wouldn't want to ruin it on the first try. So I'm going to go ahead and stick it down, but then I realized that I want that larger bag. I want the um, original edge to be facing the front. So I went ahead and turned it over. I'm just going to stick these together and then it'll be all ready to run through my sewing machine. And here it is. I'm just going to give it a straight stitch the little back stitching at the beginning and the end. Um, you might be wondering why I'm not going ahead and adding the ribbon closure here. Um, I just think it's a little difficult to add the ribbon onto the front when I'm stitching from this side. So I just went ahead and stitched it on second. I went and did these layers, just the bags first. That way I can flip it over and add the ribbon onto the other side and really watch it and make sure I know um, what's happening with the stitching on that side. I've had one too many stitching incidents where something um, didn't come out straight or got a little messed up on the back side. So for me, it's just easier to do it in two steps and make sure I don't get frustrated. <laughs> so I'm just going to go ahead and flip it over now and add the ribbon. I just added just a little tiny bit of tape runner underneath that ribbon to stick it down into the right place. I find that that tape runner doesn't really gunk up the sewing machine like um, 
score tape might. So it just runs right through, stitches really easily. You can see on the front of my sewing machine there, up in the upper right hand corner, I have a little um, note taped to my sewing machine. Basically it tells me how to change from the straight stitch to the zigzag stitch and the settings for each. <laughs> I've had it there for, oh, maybe eight or 10 years now. Those are really the only two stitches I use and I still can't remember the settings for them. So I have a little note stuck there to remind me. So basically um, the wrap is finished. You can see how I went ahead and put the envelope seals there in the middle along with the little book of stamps. And this is what it looks like when it's all wrapped up and the bow is tied. I love how you can see the cards through the glassine bag. That's just one of my favorite little parts of this set. So this is Jess Witty, and thanks for watching my wrapped card set tutorial brought to you today by Paper Tray Inc. Mm -hmm.